Last September in Berlin, TCL presented Plex, a first mobile phone under its own brand. Even though it was officially the first TCL phone, Chinese corporation actually has a long tradition in the mobile industry, releasing phones under Alcatel and Blackberry brands, which are owned by TCL. At the start of this year, it was announced that there would be no more new Blackberry devices, a surprising move for some, completely expected for others. Thing is, even though TCL may not be a big name in the mobile industry, globally it's probably more well known than BlackBerry by now thanks to its TV division since TCL TVs are second best selling in the US and third globally. Therefore, it should come as no surprise that the company decided to expand its portfolio and use all the technologies at their disposal to take its place in the mobile market. This initiative has brought us two new models and the first of those that we will present to you is the TCL 10 Pro. Expected price for this model is about 450 euros or 485 dollars, which means the company is now stepping into pricier territory. And judging by the looks alone, the price would be justified. The design is quite modern and truly a pleasant surprise for only a second model under the TCL brand. The front surface is almost completely covered by the screen, with the exception of a teardrop notch and slim bezels on the top and bottom. The sides of the screen are curved in a typical edge fashion, which is something that some users like and some don't, but still, it's a fact that this kind of design is a feature reserved for more advanced models, both in terms of tech and build quality, so it does give this phone a more expensive and exclusive look. The back of the phone is also curved, symmetrically with the screen, and also covered in glass. We very much like this design, since it's quite unique. The camera system is reminiscent of the one we saw on TCL Plex, but the frame that it is in spreads throughout the whole width of the phone and is an interesting alternative to this year's kitchen stove trend, plus it is symmetrical and discreet. Also the cameras lie completely flat with the back of the phone and the two flashes are the only thing that stick just a tiny bit above, which mitigates the problems that the current design trend with huge camera system often brings. The back surface is also unusual and looks a bit like a stained glass with a hint of transparency which gives it some depth, plus there's a color gradient with a darker top and lighter bottom and additional reflections depending on the angle of view. The color we got to review is forest mist green but it is also available in amber grey. The green one looks really unusual and elegant and the phone's metal frame also matches that tone. It is very thin at the points where the front and back meet and almost flat on the top and bottom. It houses the power and volume keys on the right and the programmable smart key on the left. On the bottom there's a microphone and mono speaker, a USB Type-C port and a hybrid slot for two SIM or one SIM and one microSD card. On the top there's an additional microphone, a 3.5mm headphone jack and an infrared port for those that like to use their phone as a capable remote for different home devices. Overall TCL 10 Pro gets very high marks for design and is a very pleasant surprise among this year's models. The screen is something that TCL is very proud of and as we saw on IFA, the company has a lot of new and cutting edge display technologies in development. This model comes with a curved 6.47 inch AMOLED display and a resolution of 1080 by 2340 pixels. It is one of the new generation panels with HDR10 support, 600 nits of brightness and a wide color gamut covering 100% of DCI-P3 spectrum. As expected from a high brightness OLED, contrast is superb and the visual impression is very very good. TCL also equipped this phone with NXT Vision software which allows you to adjust the display to your liking. In it you can activate processing which further enhances the contrast, sharpness and color saturation and is also able to convert SDR content to HDR in order to use the screen's hardware capabilities to the max. If you choose to use one of the more normal display profiles, you can pick either vivid, standard or gentle and the latter offers perhaps the most accurate color reproduction that you will find on any phone. In this mode we have measured a delta E deviation of only 1.3, which is a difference from ideal that even a very trained eye is not likely to notice. Such color accuracy is something that we have previously seen on TCL's TVs, so it's clear that the company considers accurate display very important and makes that extra effort on all its devices. There is also reading mode which offers a much more pleasant experience for reading books and news articles and that you can activate automatically for the apps you select. Since the screen is AMOLED, there is also a dark mode and always on display for notifications and a flip cover mode in case you get one, we assume they will be available as an aftermarket purchase. TCL 10 Pro also comes with an in-screen fingerprint scanner, but we can't say that it left a positive impression. It was mostly rather slow, often would not recognize the fingerprint at all and only sometimes would recognize it instantly. 
Due to this relative unreliability, we often wish the phone came with a good old reader integrated in a side button, and instead we used face recognition, which luckily is pretty fast and consistent. As for the hardware, it may be the first thing on this phone that is a bit below expectations. TCL 10 Pro comes with an octa-core Snapdragon 675 with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of UFS 2.1 storage. That's not to say that it performs badly, far from it. For most users, the performance will be more than sufficient, both in apps and the operating system. Snapdragon 675 performance is within a few percent compared to the Snapdragon 730 which comes on Galaxy A71, which has relatively similar price, but is far from the Snapdragon 855 which you may find on some of the models in this class. The built-in battery has a fairly large capacity of 4500mAh and the phone finished our battery test which consists of 10 hours of YouTube playback at 50% screen brightness with 36% of charge left. 18W Quick Charge 3.0 is supported, as well as OTG reversible charging at 5V and 1.5A in case you decide to share your battery with another device via USB. TCL 10 Pro software is based on Android 10 and leaves a very good impression along with TCL UI, a user interface that TCL has developed for its own mobile devices. Software and the interface are very flexible with plenty of ways and options to adjust it to your personal preference. Initial activation also guides you through a very detailed setup where you get to pick a few different navigation options, preferred hand, home screen type and much more. Of course you can set all of this later as well and the settings menu also offers two useful modes. One is game mode which can boost the performance, block notifications, optimize network and a few other things that may give you a better uninterrupted gaming experience. The other mode is intended for drivers and can activate automatically when the phone connects to your car's Bluetooth system. It offers certain optimizations such as voice control for making calls, reading text messages and mapping the location where you parked your car which activates when you leave your vehicle. As for the system navigation, if you pick the app drawer, the list you get by swiping up, it will be divided into clear sections which can be easily sorted and edited. Where there is a curved screen there is also an edge menu and in it you can add commonly used apps, contacts and even use the phone as a ruler. Smart key on the left side of the phone is also programmable and you can assign functions for single, double or long press, so overall there are a lot of shortcuts at your disposal. We mentioned that the phone comes equipped with an IR blaster and in the software you'll find the IR remote app which comes with an impressive list of supported devices from TVs and air conditioners to esoteric audio and video equipment. The most popular feature of any phone are probably the cameras and on TCL 10 Pro there are four on the back and one on the front. The main camera is 64 megapixels with a 26mm full frame equivalent view angle, ultra wide is 16 megapixels and 13mm, and there's also a 5 megapixel macro camera and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Cameras use a combination of face detection, contrast and laser autofocus which works pretty well. The main sensor is Samsung ISOCELL GW1 which makes very good daily photos with natural colors but perhaps a bit less contrast on a very bright day. Even though the phone has no telephoto sensor, it offers 2x zoom by cropping the main sensor and gives quite good results comparable to the ones with no zoom. Maximum available zoom is 10 times, but we do feel anything beyond 2 times is not very usable with noticeable software processing artifacts. The main camera does pretty well even in lower light and night photos are decent bright with saturated colors but noticeably less detailed due to higher noise levels. Ultrawide camera has different colors than the main one, which may also be a result of less aggressive use of image processing and the AI algorithm for scene recognition. Interestingly, although the contrast in low light is lower than on the main sensor, so is the noise, so ultrawide camera is usable in all conditions. Perhaps the biggest surprise is the macro sensor, which on most phones that came with it thus far was more of a gimmick than something actually usable. In super macro mode, TCL 10 Pro is able to get very close to an object and make photos with an impressive magnification and level of detail. It appears as if the camera in this case is assisted by a smart algorithm that interpolates different frames into one image, so to get optimal results a steady hand, rest or a stand are highly desirable. Cameras have no optical stabilization, so the image quality does depend on a stable hand, especially in low light. As for the video, things are a bit different since there is a gyro controlled electronic stabilization that does its job fairly well, both in Full HD and 4K. As with photos, you get very good videos in daylight and sunrise or sunset, but the quality drops rapidly once it gets dark. While night photos are usable, we can't say the same for video, as there is simply too much noise and a noticeable drop in detail level. 
camera app's interface will be familiar to most Android users. There's a choice between the main and ultrawide sensor in the top right corner, a choice of different shooting modes, and an icon that shows the AI recognized scene type that also deactivates the AI assistance. During the day and night, AI works fairly transparently, but we notice that it tends to overdo the color saturation in sunset, so it might be better to avoid it then. Oh, and let's not forget the 24 megapixel front camera, which is decent, but does not excel in focus in low or very bright light, so you need to keep that in mind and position yourself properly or shoot a photo or two more just in case. Overall, TCL 10 Pro certainly has its strong points. Most of all, an excellent design and a really good screen, but also software which shows a level of sophistication that we did not expect. Hardware and cameras are decent, but they are not as impressive as the other things we mentioned. All things considered, TCL 10 Pro is going to be a good choice for anyone looking for a nice design, quality screen and solid camera, and who is not that focused on hardware performance. So what are your thoughts on TCL 10 Pro? Let us know in the comments down below. We hope you enjoyed this review and if you did, please leave a like and visit our channel for more interesting reviews. You were watching Bench House, my name is Ivan and I'll see you next time.